So I'm going to tell you a little bit about how a low residency MFA program works. There are two distinct rhythms to a low residency program. There's the residency where everyone comes together and it's all high powered, high energy, a lot of caffeine, 10 day period where we're all together and having a great time. And then there's the very quiet, kind of crawl into your cave and do your writing project period time. So you would come as a new student to your first residency. And at that first residency, there would be a slew of activities that you can attend. You're welcome to attend all the ones that you want, all the ones that appeal to you. It doesn't matter about which genre you're in. But there are some things that are required. For instance, you would be in a genre writing workshop. And that would be where you're paired with six or eight other students and the mentor, a mentor in that genre, who will sit down with you in this group and you'll spend 10 hours together going through each other's writing reading carefully work that you've submitted ahead of time and having a great discussion about what you can learn about your own work and what you can learn about critiquing other people's work. Then there will be faculty and guest seminars that will be on every kind of topic that you can imagine that will appeal to writers. You can go to as many of those as you like. There will be graduating student presentations. This is where the students who are preparing to graduate give a 20 minute presentation on the topic of their choice. Then there's writers at work. Every residency we bring in either a um, agent, an editor, someone who works in the literary community who will talk you through, this is how you start planning a career for yourself. This is how you write a query letter. This is how you get your work out into the world. And they will help you figure out how to do that. Then there are a lot of requirements that we'll have you do while you're a student here, and I'm gonna get into those in a minute. But before we ask you to do them, we will give you an orientation. And in that orientation, we will take you by the hand and give you all the skills you need to be successful at that. Then most nights at the residency, there are readings. And these readings include um, our some of our faculty, the selected faculty are chosen each time, and then whoever the special guests are that are coming in will come and give a reading. And at that evening reading will also be some of our graduating students. Then we have um, Meet the Mentors, which is a panel where all the mentors in your genre come to a room with all the students in your genre, and they tell you a little bit about who they are as a writer, what kinds of things they're reading, what kinds of things they're working on, what their aesthetic is, and you get to know all the different mentors. And you can actually go around and have individual office hours with them one by one to see who they are. Because in early in the residency, you're going to be asked to choose who you would like to work with as a mentor. We give you a selection form and you're gonna fill it out and say, these are my top four choices. These are the mentors I'd really like to work with. Then we get together and we pair people up with mentors so that you have a one-on-one -on -one relationship with someone that you're interested in working with. Once that's created, during the residency, you will meet with that mentor one-on-one, -on -one, and you will draft a contract of all the things you would like to accomplish this term in the, in the project period when you go away. In this contract will be things like um, what kind of essays you might want to work on, what kind of short stories, what kind of poems you're interested in writing this term. Maybe there's a craft issue you want to work on. All that will go in your contract with this mentor. And then there are social events. Um, there will be times to go out with people in your cohort, which are the people who all started the program with you, or people in your genre. So if you're a poet, you can go out with, have a night with the poets, or if you're a, um, you, whatever your cohort is, there's a lunch with your cohort, then there are just social evening events as well, um, including um, nights out at local areas here, local readings, it's a lot of fun. So when the first residency ends, you've got a contract and you go home with your contract, and now begins the quiet project period, work intensive time. What happens during this time is in your contract, it will be laid out for the next five months what you are expected to do. For instance, if you're a prose writer, you'll generally be turning in 20 to 30 pages of work. And if you're a poet, five to 10 poems for that month. Mm -hmm. So when you go home for the first set of project period deadlines after your first residency, you will be turning in five packets that will have that creative work in it that will also have annotations. You will have um, a minimum of 10 books that you will read over the project period that you will have decided ahead of time with your mentor what those books are and you will write critical annotations of those work 
and send them in with your creative writing to your mentor. Then you will receive back from your mentor line edits all over your work and probably a letter that goes into all the details of things you're going to want to take into account as you get ready to revise this. In addition to talking to your mentor about what you read, you're also then paired in a reading conference group with people who share your mentor. Yeah. So during that project period, which can be a time where you're away from a lot of people and you can forget how you're connected to this community, through your online reading conference, you discuss and you write about the books that you're reading in common with your fellow students and have a rich, interesting discussion with them. So at that point, you're getting ready to come back for the second residency. The second residency, you'll do everything I talked about in the first residency, and then we'll throw in a translation seminar on top of this. And this is an in-person seminar where you learn something about the art of translation, about choosing words carefully. You don't have to speak a foreign language to do this, and we teach you how to do it, but it's to make you as sensitive as possible to language. So you complete your second residency, you drop a new contract, you go into your second project period. With a new mentor. With a new mentor. Yeah. And um, once you're in that project period, now there's new requirements that are thrown in. So you still do your five packets that we talked about in the first project period, but now we're going to throw in an online translation conference that you'll be doing, and you will write your first five-page critical paper. Then you come back to the third residency, basically the same as the first two. You take all the seminars, you have a great time, you bond with people. You write up a new contract, you get yet another mentor. You go home for your third project period. At this point, you're going to write a 25-page critical paper that is a heavy-duty, solid analysis of something literary. And this is to work those literary muscles, to work the um, ability to write academically, and hopefully to go out and publish these papers after that you've completed them. You come back for the next residency, then you go to your final project period where, you, again, you have a new mentor. You can repeat the same mentor up to two times if you wish to. By the time you get to your fourth project period, you're now preparing for graduation. So this project period, you will work with your mentor one-on-one -on -one to develop your final manuscript, which will be a collection of work. It can be a complete book. It can be pieces of things. It's generally 100 pages of prose or 50, 40, 40, 40 pages, poetry. Yeah. 40 poems. Um, that, that represents the best work that you did while you were a graduate student at Antioch University, Los Angeles. At that point, you're also putting together a cumulative annotated bibliography, which is the analysis of all the books you've read while you've been here in a nice collection to represent all the um, academic and critical writing that you have done during that time. Then you prepare for your final residency. And at this final residency, you get to come as the seniors. You know, you're the ones who are ready to graduate. And you will give a graduating student presentation that's 20 minutes long on the subject of your choice. You will give a professional reading of your creative work in one of the evening readings with the spotlight on you and maybe some famous writer reading before you. It's very exciting. Um, and then you will turn in your final manuscript and it will be accepted and bound and, and archived. And at that point you will graduate and we will all clap and cheer and, and have a great time um, celebrating your accomplishment. Our field study requirement uh, was born with the program. We encourage you to get it done early in the first, second, or third term, but the important thing is to spend that time finding a way that you can put on your, your writer hat, if you would, and bring it into a context where you may not have felt like a writer before. So for instance, we had a student a few years ago who, um, I believe it was after Hurricane Katrina, she had a lot of elderly jazz musicians moving into her community in Atlanta and they weren't getting gigs. They had grown up and lived their lives and their careers in a whole different place. She became friends with them mm -hmm. and she thought, gee, what they really need is a publicity packet. Mm -hmm. And she created press packets for those musicians and they relaunched their careers in a new place. Um, so it's a way of, of perhaps engaging with people you already know, perhaps meeting new people in your own community, and saying, hey, I'm a writer, and it means something. It's about the things that words can do in the world, not just about writing for the sake of publishing that book and having that great feeling when you see your, your name on that, on that book cover. The genres that we, we, you may apply in would be poetry, fiction, creative nonfiction, or writing for young people. But at any time that you're here, 
you can take a term, one whole semester, one whole project period, as, as, as you were saying, Bernadette, in which you will work with a mentor and write in a different genre. And you don't have to send in an application that proves that you're a brilliant fiction writer as well as a poet. You can do it just to do it. You can come in as a brilliant poet, and you can jump over into any genre that you would like to even begin to explore. Now, for some people, that jump is so fabulous, they do not want to jump back at the end of the term. So for students who feel that way, we offer a dual concentration. You can spend two terms in another genre and stay one extra term, so you have three terms in your primary genre, two terms in your secondary genre, and you'll graduate with a dual concentrated degree. But for some of our students, it's not as clear as sharing identity with a second genre. Their fascination may actually be in genre blends or genre hybrids. As Bernadette had said, you can take classes in anything you want while you're here. A program like this reminds us that words have power in the world. And even if your, your personal mission isn't political, that feeling that your words matter in a social context tends to keep our students writing long after they graduate. We've had mentors and outside reviewers even note that our alumni outcomes are so good, in part because our students are still writing so many years after they graduate. It's not all about that one book, that one urgent thing they have to say. It's about the general power of words and how they interact in all the areas of our lives.